good morning everybody uh, in the last session we have learnt about what is spillway why it is provided and effect of cavitation ugi spillways in this one we have learnt in depth about ugi profile using wes standards and we have learnt about equations of discharge and effective length these things were been discussed in detail in the last session along with the some of the simple problems today we will discuss about energy dissipation here this energy dissipators are used below the spillways that's why the heading is energy dissipation below the spillways okay first thing we have to know what is energy dissipation so here because the water which is being stored in the upstream side of the spillway it got huge potential energy whenever the flood occurs it will fall over the spillway so here there will be a formation of kinetic energy as it flows down and finally it uh, causes scouring so to avoid this scouring we have to go for energy dissipators so here what i have explained the same thing water flowing over a spillway acquires very high velocity because of the conversion of potential energy possessed by the water on the upstream side to the to kinetic energy as it flows down if the water flowing with such high velocity is discharged into the river it will scour the river bed if the scour is not checked the scour will extend backwards and endangers the spillway as well as the dam in such cases to con to have a protect to the river bed against the scour the higher the kinetic higher kinetic energy of the water should be restricted or reduced that is dissipate dissipated before it is discharged into the rivers so for this purpose we'll be using dissipating devices here two methods is mainly adopted or which is commonly adopted one is by de developing an hydraulic jump and another one is by using different types of energy di dissipators such as stilling basin and buckets here first we'll go we'll get to know what is hydraulic jump so this hydraulic jump might be you have studied in the for fourth semester so i'll just give you an, a brief introduction about the hydraulic jump the sudden raise in the water level when the flow comes from supercritical state to subcritical state that sudden change is called as hydraulic jump in other words if i want to define this hydraulic jump is a sudden and turbulent passage of water from supercritical to subcritical state here the flow in an hydraulic jump is accompanied by the formation of extremely turbulent rollers and there is considerable dissipation of energy as such the hydraulic jump is mostly suitable and effective means of energy dissipation here depending upon the fraud numbers we have different types of hydraulic jump so first is if the fraud number f1 is 1 then the flow is said to be critical flow hence there is no jump can be formed over there and if there is any uh, fraud number which is more than 1 then there is a chances of formation of hydraulic jump so here f1 if it is lying between 1 to 1.7 so there is a formation of in undulations and there is an angular jump 
here in this one the energy dissipation that is the reduction of kinetic energy is about 5 percent when fraud number is 1.7 to 2.5 a series of roller rollers develop on the surface of the jump and known as weak jump here the amount uh, the amount of energy dissipation is about 20 percent and next is if the fraud number is more than 2.5 and less than 4.5 then the entering jet oscillates from back to front so this is called as an oscillate oscillating jump as it is oscillating back and front so it is called as oscillating jump here the max uh, the energy dissipation is about 20 to 45 percent and fraud number if it is lying between 4.5 to 9 a stable and well balanced jump is developed which is known as study jump the energy dissipation between 45 to 70 percent so here the maximum dissipation can be occurred using this study jump if the fraud number is 4.5 to 9 next is if the fraud number is more than 9 then the jump action is rough and very strong surface wave downstream of the jump here it is called as strong jump and the energy dissipation is about 85 percent and next we'll go for stilling basin a stilling basin is defined as a structure in which hydraulic jump used for an energy dissipation is confined either partially or entirely so certain accessories such as chute blocks or baffle blocks and end seals are usually provided in stilling basin to reduce the length of the jump and thus to reduce the length of length and cost of stilling basin moreover these accessories that is chute blocks baffle blocks and end seals also improve the dissipation action of the basin and stabilizes the jump so here the still which are the accessories which is used as a stilling basin to reduce the energy dissipation again it is dependent on the fraud number so if the fraud number is between 1.7 to 2.5 in this cases a horizontal apron needs to be provided as the flow in this case does not have much turbulence usually no accessories are required to be provided However, this ap apron should be sufficiently long to contain the entire jump over it. For this, the length of the apron should be equal the length of the jump which is 5 times the final depth that is hydraulic jump. 5 times of y2. y2 is a final depth of the hydraulic jump. See the stilling basins or might be hydraulic jumps ev everything is being provided at the toe of the spillway if i consider this is your spillway over here this energy dissipators are being provided apron means it's just a concrete structure which is provided and the length is being uh, provided such a long that the energy that is kinetic energy will be reduced over here so this one is used for the fraud number between 1.7 to 2.5 next we go for stilling basin for the fraud number which is more than 2.5 and less than 4.5 that type of stilling basin is called as type 1 stilling basin over here this is provided at the end of the spillway two of the spillway you can see it and these are the chute boxes blocks which is being provided 
and this is along the length L there we have provided end seal this end seal is an optional and this length is dependent on the hydraulic depth that will be discussed later here the clearance between two chute boxes blocks is 2.5 times the width and width is width of the chute box is equal to the initial hydraulic jump that is depth of hydraulic jump y1 and this length of the chute block is two times the initial hydraulic jump depth and this height where the end seal is being provided that height is 1.25 times the depth of the hydraulic jump that is initial hydraulic jump y1 here what I as i explained you the basin is provided with a chute blocks and the end seal is optional the sizing and shaping of the chute block is being shown in the figure i have explained you and the length over here of the stilling base stilling basin for different values of f1 is given by so this for type 1 stilling basin is being used for the rod number 2.5 to 4.5 here if it is 2 then the length will be 4.3 the ratio of length of the still this uh, this chute box to the end seal divided by the final depth of hydraulic jump so it will be 4.3 for fraud number which is 3 then the ratio of length by the final depth of hydraulic jump is about 5.3 likewise it is going to continue okay next we'll go for stilling basins for the fraud number which is greater than 4.5 and it is dependent on the velocity of inflow see here again another case will come for the fraud number which is 4.5 and when the velocity of incoming flow is less than 15 meter per second then we go for type 2 stilling basin here the chute box is going to be provided like in the case of type 1 stilling basin how we have been uh, done and here the baffle blocks is being provided after that we are going to provide the end seals so here chute box blocks is having a width of initial depth of hydraulic jump and the clearance the clearance between the two chute boxes blocks will be equal to the depth of hydraulic jump that is initial hydraulic jump and the distance between the chute blocks and the baffle blocks will be about 0.8 times the final depth of the hydraulic jump and the height of the baffle block will be h3 this h3 will be discussed uh, using the table and the slope generally will be provided about 1 is to 1 and the clearance between two baffle blocks will be about 0.75 times the h3 and the width of this baffle block will be 0.75 times the h3 and here the end sill it is will it will be provided with a slope of 2 is to 1 and the height will be h4 so this h3 and h4 will be provided using the table and along with the length here when the velocity of incoming flow is less than 15 meter per second type 2 stilling basin is provided this one i have been explained this one already okay here the value of 
length height of the baffle that is h3 and height of the end seal h4 of the stilling basin for different values of f1 is generally given as the stable if the fraud number is about 5 then the ratio of length of the stilling basin to the final depth of the hydraulic jump is about 2.3 and for the same if uh, it is 5 that is fraud number is 5 then h by h by h3 by y1 that is the height of the baffle block to the initial depth of the hydraulic jump will be about 1.5 and the height of the end seal that is h4 to the height of the that is initial height of the hydraulic jump y1 will be about 1.2 this way we are going to provide h3 value h4 that is height of the baffle block and height of the end seal and the length so the question arises why this baffle blocks is being provided here you providing the baffle blocks and the silting length of the basin is considerably reduced because the energy dissipation is being accomplished by the hydraulic jump as well as impinging action of the incoming flow against these blocks however the baffle blocks will be subjected to large impacts forces due to the impingement of the incoming flow over here this is an advantage as well as disadvantage also to over to overcome this ad disadvantage so we have we are going for another type of stilling basin that is third type of stilling basin here when the velocity of incoming flow will be more than 15 meter per second and fraud number will remain same that is more than 4.5 then we go for third type of stilling basin over here as uh, type 1 we are going to provide the chute blocks at the toe of the spillway and here only difference is we are removing the baffle blocks to avoid this impinging action and here at the end seal before we used to have an end seal which is solid but here we have we can see the end seal which is being provided with the teeth like structures that is tendon seal so here chute box the depth and dimensions is given over here in the diagram and the dented seal it is going to be provided with a slope of 2 is to 1 here in the other cases of ceiling basin we used to provide the slope at the inner side but here we are providing at the outer side okay this is about the stilling basin that is type 3 stilling basin in this type only chute blocks are provided instead of solid end seal and dented end is provided in basin in this basin the baffle blocks are not provided because there are because of two things which is due to the high velocity of incoming flow these block will be subjected to large impact forces and there is a possibility of cavitation on the downstream side due to the large negative pressure developed however due to the baffle blocks being eliminated in this case the energy dissipation is accomplished by hydraulic jump action Hence, the length of the basin will be greater than the type 2 basin and the length of the stilling basin will be again provided using the fraud number. For the fraud number of 5, then the ratio of length of the stilling basin to the final 
depth of the hydraulic jump is about 3.85 likewise it is going to continue next we'll go for bucket type energy dissipators here here the dissipation of energy can be done using energy dissipators in that one stilling basin was one and another one type is bucket type energy dissipators here in this type of energy dissipator the end of the spillway is going to be having an upturned bucket which is going to divert the water from from the toe of the spillway and it is going to be diverted from the spillway this type is used in overflow spillways basically as it is very economic and this type of dissipators is used where the fraud number is more than 10. This type is used when the river bed over here is mainly consists of stiff rocks. Other than this, there are again three types. One is solid roller, another one is salted roller buckets and another last one is sky jump buckets so this is a raw solid roller bucket this is a bucket and this is the downstream of the bucket once the water from the spillway enters to this bucket there will be an anti-clockwise movement of the water that is called as bucket roller and at the downstream side of the bucket there is an uh, clockwise movement of the water that is called as ground roller so the anti-clockwise and clockwise rollers along with the water that is jet causes energy dissipation this is how the energy is going to be dissipated in the case of solid roller buckets so the same thing a solid roller bucket consists of bucket like apron with a con concave circular profile of the large radius and deflector lip as shown in the figure this one this is a concave and then this is this is at the lip when the water flows over the bucket the entire sheet of water leaving the bucket is deflected up by the bucket and two elliptical rollers are developed this one which is one is anti-clockwise other one is clockwise here the upward deflection of the water by the bucket lip creates a high boil of water surface and violent gro ground rollers this ground rollers continuously pulls the loose bed materials backward and develops a seam against the lip of the bucket some of these materials may be trapped here and damage the surface of the bucket by abrasion. So, these is a drawback of solid roller bucket are removed and slotted roller buckets are being used instead of solid roller buckets. This is a figure of a slotted roller buckets wherein this one is having an apron which is a concave circular in profile but the longer radius there it was a shorter radius but it here it is longer radius and here it is being provided with the slotted or dented deflectors lip the same wise like uh, what it was there in the solid rollers it will be creating an anti-clockwise roller and this one will be creating a roller effect however in this case water leaves the lip of the bucket at a flatter angle and only a part of it is being deflected upwards thus the surface boil is considerably reduced and less violent ground ro rollers occurs so which is a result in smoother flow on the downstream side in this case the bed material is not deposited on the bucket also if any debris which might get into the bucket is immediately washed through the slots next is 
sky jump bucket here this is used mainly at the at the end of the spillway wherein the tail water depth is less than the subsequent depth which here which requires a formation of hydraulic jump this one and the river bed is composed of stiff rocks only there this kind of jump buckets are being used so in this case the energy can be dissipated by the free jet this one wherein the air pressure in in the jet is divided into number of smaller bubbles of water so here this type of bucket is majorly used wherein the tail water depth should be less than the final depth this is about energy dissipation and tomorrow's session will start up with the coslas and blinks theory so today's question is what kind of energy dissipators are used when fraud number is 4.5 and velocity of inflow is less than 15 meter per second thank you